Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you guys are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, we are kind of getting it all done. I'm actually gonna start with a little clip from what we did last night. We pressure washed our driveway and just kind of got all of like the black smudges off. Some of them didn't come off entirely. I think I ran out of soap. I like concentrated too much on one area, but let's go ahead and clean our driveway and then we will get into a Walmart haul. So I find those kind of things like really relaxing. When you hold the little pressure washer thing like right next to the cement, you can definitely see the line where it's getting clean. So that was really fun for me, although my like fingers were like really tired from holding the trigger. Anyways, uh, I'm glad that we got that done, that I didn't totally run out of daylight. But uh, now I just got home from bringing the kids to Walmart. Jack fell asleep on the ride home and he transferred nicely into his crib. So I'm going to take advantage of that time time <laughs> away from him and taking care of him to putting our groceries away. But before I do that, I want to show you guys what we got from Walmart. And I do want to mention, I have this little like Rudolph the red Nose reindeer, you know, Chris, ugly Christmas sweater, although it's not ugly, it's cute. Uh, Juan and I got these a while ago, like a couple years ago when Aubrey was the first little like baby and we have matching ones, but we don't wear them often. And I thought that while I was pushing Jack in the cart, he might think the lights are, you know, fun and distract him from just being stuck in a seat. So when we were shopping, Aubrey saw some PJ Mask like pajamas. She saw these first and they didn't have any in Jack's size, but then we saw these PJ Mask ones that were in his size-ish. So I decided to get them some PJs. She seemed really excited about it and he couldn't care less about what he wears. So anyways, got little matching PJs for them. Some disinfecting wipes because I don't know where any of mine are. I think we've used them all up. And it's just nice to have like when we go out uh, to clean things when Jack's little fingers are going to be touching them. I picked this up as a little gift for Aubrey. She loves Frozen still and I thought it would be like a cute way to organize her bathroom stuff since she just kind of leaves it all out everywhere. So a cute little cup, a toothbrush, and then a place for her to store her toiletries. I got some of these giant lunch bags because today we're going to actually be assembling some homeless bags. This is something I did very early on in my channel and it's about time that we do it again. For the homeless bags I like to get snacks that won't go bad for a really long time and then also snacks that we enjoy especially if there's leftovers. So we got some peanut butter crackers, little applesauce packets, baked apple chips are always you know yummy some fruit snacks and some birthday cake mini muffins. I might steal one of the 10 pouches cause that's like one of my favorites. And then I didn't get any on our trip, but sometimes I like to include socks because that's like a big thing that homeless people say that they need. Sometimes I put in like homemade scarves or just things that you buy um, that like for warmth 
paintings, things like that. Uh, but like I said, I didn't pick up any. I just wanted to make sure that we got like some food items. And then I'll be putting in, I think, some uh, water bottles that we already have, I believe, at home. I got some gifts for Juan. So he likes Tic Tacs. I couldn't find any of the, just the orange ones. But anyways, that's for him. And then he recently is on a melting like wax kick. So I got farm apple and fresh cut Fraser. I didn't realize that it was farm apple and pumpkin, but it actually does smell very nice. So uh, these are flavors that I like and I think that he likes them too, or at least he better because this is technically a gift for him. Speaking of gifts, more gifts for bubs here. And then we had a couple of these, but like the rubber part broke a long time ago. So I figured this would be a good little cup for him to start learning how to drink out of. I don't know if any of you guys have tried these before, but it's like to help the babies learn how to drink from like the lip of a cup rather than always needing something to suck on. Got these as a little treat for Aubrey. She loves bubble gum, so I think that she would like this. And then speaking of Aubrey, she picked out two green apples. I'm almost out of my vanilla and the imitation vanilla works just fine in our baking. Got some more apples. If we don't eat all of these, I will happily make more apple bread because the apple bread is delicious. Got some more bananas. The ones that we have are like ready for banana bread. They're not really good to eat. So got to pick up more of these. We got some oven roasted turkey in this form because it was cheaper than purchasing like the thinly shredded turkey and it's just getting so expensive. And if you've ever tried turkey, cranberry sauce and cream cheese, that is like a really yummy sandwich combo. So that's why I bought this because I've been kind of craving that. And to go with that sandwich, got some romaine lettuce. I picked up some sour cream in case we make some more coffee cake. So gotta have that on hand. Some flour tortillas, lots of eggs. Aubrey has been asking for hard boiled eggs. So I will be making some today and I'll be making a lot because she can eat like three in one sitting. So gotta have a lot of these also for baking and it's a pretty good sell by date. So I will definitely use all of these by the 13th of January. And last but not least, I picked up some more of these cranberries. I'm going to be freezing one or two of them and then I'm gonna be making that cranberry cake again because that cranberry cake is just so yummy. And since I have the almond extract, I just figure, you know, why not? Tis the season. So let's go ahead and put away like all the refrigerated stuff and start making those homeless bags. So I have found that boiling eggs for 17 minutes and then giving them an immediate ice bath 
gives you the perfect hard-boiled egg. The shell peels off nicely and the white separates from the yolk really nice. So definitely give this a try if you haven't already figured out your perfect method for hard-boiling eggs. But while these eggs were boiling, I decided since Aubrey was a little preoccupied to go ahead and wrap some of the presents that we got. And I'm also going to be relabeling some of the presents I've already wrapped and are under our tree. And that is because Aubrey has already gone, recognized her name, and started opening up some of her gifts. And also she knows that one gift was for, for Juan and she thinks it's candy. And so she really wanted it for herself. So she actually actually switch the name tags which I just kind of use like post-it notes to like label the gifts she switched them so that Juan would get her little t-shirt and she would get his candy so in a second I will be like more securely labeling the presents so that she can't pull that one again Lord knows that I've tried to you said I was the only one no one likes being like to you made this mess and left me with the pieces Now I wanna burn all the bridges between us So here I'm using an oil-based Sharpie to relabel one of my egg holders. I have enough of them where I can have one just like permanently designated for hard-boiled eggs. And unfortunately, like today, I noticed that this marker kind of rubs off. I don't know if it's because of the texture of the plastic or what, but it isn't as permanent as I was expecting it to be. So that was a little bit of a disappointment, but it's not a big deal. I can find another way to label this container. But here I am giving the eggs the ice bath that I mentioned. And within just a few minutes, you know, they are cool enough that you can peel and eat and enjoy them right away. But I will be storing 12 of these away. And then Aubrey and I are going to be snacking on the few extra that I put in there. What we're going to be making today? We're going to make homeless bags. And um, they're for people who, do they have a home? No. No. And are they hungry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we're supposed to help take care of them. <gasps> we want to put two of these crackers in each bag. Okay. Nice and gentle so they don't break. One. And then do one more in that bag. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that one has the peanut butter crackers already. There's two in this bag. Mm, Alright, so, so we have eight bags. We don't have enough of like certain snacks, so we'll make it work. Each bag is going to get just one applesauce. Okay. Good job. That one. Mm. What are we going to do with all these? These are going to be homeless bags. I want... Here. I guess what I want one of these too. We'll have some 
some extra. Perfect. Yay! more. Perfect. Can I have this one? Yep. Okay. It tastes like apples. <laughs> and I love apples. All right. Then each bag is going to get one thing of birthday cake muffins. Put one in there. Put one in here. How many of these do you think they should get? Two, me too. I think so too. And we're gonna do some baked apple chips. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna write some notes to the homeless people saying that we're praying for them and that we hope they have, um, we hope that they, they get what they need to get out of their situation. I would say, I think both of them need one. Yeah. Okay. Then they can always refill it at a water fountain. Which, fun fact, we are like a country that, I think we take water for granted. I went to Spain for World Youth Day when I was 21, and you had to pay for water like at restaurants. It just, it's not something that you just get for free. There's no water fountains. Like you have to buy bottled water. It's not as accessible as it is here. Put at the bottom. Should have put them in first, huh? That's okay. So we'll write them little notes and you can craft and then um, we'll staple this up and put some in the cars. Why? So that when we're driving around and we see someone who's hungry, we can give them a bag. All right, so now that these are almost done, uh, I'm gonna open up some snacks for Aubrey and yeah, then- Yeah, I don't look at Bub. <laughs> he's always hungry every day. Yeah, Bub's is always hungry. Yeah. Right now he's sleeping, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just eating these waffles. Yeah. <laughs> he so I'm gonna give her these snacks and probably sit at the table with her and like write some little notes just to kind of tuck in here for the homeless people that we run into on our outings. Bed. So Jack just woke up and uh, we're done with the homeless bags. So I'm gonna go in there and feed him. Then we'll probably go play outside for a little bit, make dinner, all the normal stuff. And then I will check back in later tonight. I want to tidy up, maybe not full deep clean, but just, you know, tidy up and fold some laundry. I would like to thank Costi for sponsoring this portion of today's video. They sent us these magnetic tiles for Aubrey to play with. It is a set of like a hundred pieces. There are a variety of shapes and sizes. It also comes with like a cute little car and a little like person figurine that you can play with. And I just love how like sturdy these tiles felt. The magnets were nice and strong and Aubrey loves playing with these. This definitely keeps her busy during the day and she can come up with so many creations. But if you don't have a kid with a huge creative imagination, they do give some examples of what you can build and the exact pieces you would need to replicate some of these designs. I went ahead and just picked one of like the two star, like the fairly easy ones and made it myself. And then um, they also come with like cute little insert pieces for these specific magnetic tiles where you can have like a window or like little doors that open up, which I thought were extremely adorable. And then something that they also come with in this set that was a little bit more unique compared to some other sets I've seen is they have two of these extra large tiles and and, you know, I just thought that those were really cool to build with. I love this. 
So I went ahead and gave these pieces to Aubrey and she was very excited to start building and just kind of creating. Like I said, she just loves creating things and these blocks are the perfect toy for her. She will like create castles or like she's using the car in this clip. She plays with the little figurine and drives him around. It's just a great thing for her to keep busy and stay creative. If this seems like a product that you or a loved one would like, I will go ahead and place the link down below in the description box for your convenience. Again, I'd like to thank Cost for sponsoring this portion of today's video and blessing us with this amazing toy that entertained Aubrey for hours. So in the evening, I decided to make some chocolate conchas. These are like a little sweet roll, sweet bread that Juan grew up eating. He enjoyed it. And I finally figured I'd give it a try a while ago. And Juan rated it a 10 out of 10. He loved them. So I was just in the mood to bake. So I decided to make the dough using my bread machine and also make the streusel topping using my blender. Now I just, you know, I'm showing you guys my recipe card if you want to screenshot it and try this recipe on your own. I recognize that not everyone has a bread machine, which in my opinion, it just, it saves so much time. I've made bread, you know, without a bread machine and, you know, I, I don't necessarily choose to go back to pre-bread machine bread making, but I will do it if you guys want me to make this recipe kind of side by side and compare bread machine conchas to like stand mixer conchas. I'm not going to be kneading by hand by any means. I would definitely be using a bread hook, but I, you know, it'd be interesting to compare the two methods and see how the rolls like come out. But anyways, let me know down below in the comments if that is something you would like to see or if this recipe is totally fine and you don't need to see a special video comparing the two baking methods. But here I'm going ahead and like making the rolls. This dough is extra soft, so it doesn't show necessarily the folds or like here I'm taking a couple pieces of dough and combining them. That doesn't really affect the final result, which I really like. There are some bread doughs that are thicker and are harder to combine once like cut from the larger portion. So here I'm, you know, just forming equal sized pieces. And then I made six rolls that had nothing inside, which is the standard version. But then I wanted to kind of create like a chocolate chip center. And it didn't turn out as I was thinking like it would in my head. But Juan really liked it. He said he would go like 50-50 again, like some traditional and then some modified with more chocolate chips throughout the dough. So, you know, it was a success. It just didn't kind of come out like how I was envisioning it in my head. One thing I do recommend if you don't have one already is getting a food scale. It makes measuring things for baking so much easier as well as in this case, trying to form like equal sized rolls. I could have eyeballed it, but even when I tried to eyeball it, I was still kind of off. So here it really helps. 
Now what I'm doing is I'm portioning out the streusel topping again in 12 equal sized pieces using my little food scale. And then I'm gonna be using my tortilla press to flatten them out so that we can put them on top of the rolls. Now again, if you don't have a tortilla press, you could roll these out using like a rolling pin. I'm not very talented at rolling things out in like a perfect circle and I have just found that a tortilla press does the job perfectly. So I'm not gonna go and use a rolling pin because it would just not look pretty. So next up, we are kind of covering these rolls after they've risen for a little bit. Uh, we're covering the top with some butter, just like a very thin layer. And then we will be putting on the streusel topping. Now this streusel topping is nice and like, I think pliable would be the right word. I don't know. It's It, it can definitely be squished around the sides of the rolls. And um, I'm actually pressing them out using my tortilla press between each roll. So I'm doing them kind of fresh rather than pressing them and then letting them kind of dry out in that flat form. It would make it a little bit more difficult to get them to, you know, fit nicely around the roll. Once the streusel topping is on top of the rolls, I would have taken a knife, but the knife I wanted to use was a little dirty, so I used my bread scraper just to kind of create little creases in the streusel topping, not cutting into the dough, but just kind of cutting into the streusel topping in a curved shape to make a shell, which is again, the concha. Now I've seen people actually have like a little type of utensil that like just stamps it on. I don't have that. Maybe I will get one in the future because it would make this step a lot easier, but you can really do any design that you want. When these rolls bake, they will expand and you will see more of the bread uh, between the streusel cuts. So, you know, here again, it will just make it look like a shell. Now you don't have to do chocolate, which is the version that I did. I've seen people do strawberry, cinnamon, you know, pumpkin spice. You could do a variety of flavors for the streusel topping. I'm actually kind of considering doing like a, a blend of my Polish sweet bread, which is the Placek, with the Mexican concha and seeing if I can merge these two cultures into making like the perfect little roll. I'm very intrigued with how that might turn out. So that might be in a future video, but here's what it looks like after it comes out of the oven. Nice and like golden brown on the bottom. Aubrey broke off the streusel first, but she will consume this whole thing. She won't just eat the topping. It is a very subtly sweet bread, very delicious, and in my opinion, the best when it's like warm and out of the oven. But anyways, so that has, you know, been done. It was pretty late when when I was done baking that, gave some to a new friend, Juan took some to work the next day, and then like I said, I just went ahead and tidied up and finished off the night by folding some laundry. I would like to thank you guys for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and if it motivated you at all. If you are new, I would love for you to stick around and subscribe and catch all of my motherhood content. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Have an awesome day. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. 
Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.